Dirk, you've been doing some, what to me seems amazing work because you're taking patients um, with pancreatic cancer who don't have very long to live, but you're doing a lot for them. Can you tell me about the study that you've been describing today? Well, we, we have done a couple of studies during the last 10 years in Amsterdam. Uh, you should realize that unfortunately the majority of patients with pancreatic cancer cannot be cured. Uh, about 20% of these patients will have a curative resection, but the majority, the other 80% of these patients, have advanced disease locally or metastasis, but they have symptoms. Symptoms of obstructive jaundice because the bile is not able to go to the gut and um, obstruction because there is a stenosis at the end of the uh, stomach, gastric outlet obstruction, and these patients will suffer from their complaints. And, and some of these patients also have pain, of course. And we are able to treat these patients, uh, at least the symptoms of these patients, quite well. And there is a lot of discussion during the last 10 years in the literature uh, if these patients should be tra treated by surgical bypasses for biliary obstruction or for the gastric outlet obstruction or stenting of these patients and that is a non-surgical procedure to introduce an endoscopic stent in these patients. You've been reporting on stenting uh, right here today, haven't you? Now, what, what did yeah. you say? Well, we randomized these patients, uh, uh, so half of these patients underwent stenting and the other half of these patients went bypass surgery. And in general, patients with a very short life expectancy, uh, and I'm thinking about two, three months, these patients will do better after stenting because initially stenting is associated with a shorter hospital stay and a rapid recovery. But patients who will have a life expectancy of more than three or six months are doing better after surgery. That is the outcome of the studies. Mm. So we try to to evaluate the patients after initial uh, staging of the disease, um, what type of, of life expectancy they have, and for the really short survival expected patients, they will go for stenting, and the longer ones, in fact, need surgery and bypass surgery. Some of these patients are, are really in a bad way because you can have an obstruction, so they just vomit, uh, their they, they, they gastric yeah, yeah, obstruction yeah, is yeah, preventing them from yeah. swallowing food normally. And in fact, both procedures are, are uh, quite well uh, relieve the symptoms in short term already. Uh, so stenting is doing quite well after one or two days already. But after one or two months, these patients will have recurrent symptoms and they have uh, they need new stents, so you have to replace these stents and go on and on. And after surgery, you have only to do one procedure. And, and therefore, for short survival stenting, longer survival bypass surgery. Because then these patients don't have any obstruction during the last six, seven, eight months of their life. Mm -hmm. Can you give me some idea of just how big a difference this makes symptomatically for these patients? Well, in, in, in the success rate of relief of symptoms for biliary obstruction, jaundice, is in the early days for both procedures roughly 95-98%. Uh, after three to six months, the relief of symptoms after stenting is roughly 65%, so 35% of these patients will have recurrence of their jaundice and need another treatment and the overall relief after surgery is 95%. So these patients will not have recurrent disease, at least not have recurrent obstructive jaundice. So this basically means a patient who would have been in an extremely bad way for a few months can lead a relatively normal life. You will relieve the symptoms of obstruction in these patients in terms of obstruction jaundice of these patients and obstruction of the gastric outlet obstruction that they can, work, can eat well. Um, unfortunately, many of these patients also have enormous pain. And of course, you, you have to relieve also the pain. Uh, and therefore, surgery has limited... Uh, 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 it's not too good for that, of course. So there you have your medication, of course. Mm. But we are talking about the majority of patients with pancreatic cancer who... Yeah. Uh, need your services. What message would you give to doctors to remember about all of this uh, coming out of the work you've now reported? 
Well, we did quality of life assessment in these patients, both after a resection, palliative resection, after bypass surgery, and also after stenting, uh, by weekly reporting the, the quality of life of these patients. And what we have found is that the quality of life is reasonable good after these treatments, and deterioration is only in the last four or five weeks. So these both treatment uh, uh, possibilities offer um, a good quality of improvement of quality of life for the majority of the remaining uh, life expectancy they have. Mm. Now, bearing in mind that many of these patients are candidates for resection and until you actually explore them, you don't necessarily know what you're going to find. How do you smarten up all of the procedures so that you minimize the impact on the patient? Well, of, of, of course, staging of the, disease, of, the, uh, of the disease is most important now, and, uh, and all these patients will at least have a CT scan before any procedure is done in them uh, to, to stage the disease. And if they have already stage four disease with extensive metastasis, uh, uh, and looking for the overall uh, morbidity of these patients, you, you will m be able to make the decision for uh, uh, to have any life expectancy and to select stenting or bypass surgery in these uh, patients. Mm. Of course, if they have limited disease, we still go for surgery and resection, but that is only in about 20% of these patients. Mm. And if, if I can uh, continue, the uh, resection is the only possibility for cure uh, uh, in these 20% of these patients, but we should realize that even after a so-called curative resection, so radical removal of the local tumor, uh, the majority of these patients, 75%, will still have recurrent disease within one, two or three years. So the progress we made in pancreas surgery is still limited. The surgical procedure is done well now, the mortality is low, but many of these patients will, patients will still have recurrent disease and we are waiting for better chemotherapy, post-operative adjuvant chemotherapy or preoperative chemotherapy to improve further. We've been hearing about multidisciplinary approaches here at this meeting of ESSO. Does that come into your work at all? Patients in, in my hospital, uh, we are starting in the morning to see these patients. We are doing all the research, the uh, investigation, the radiological investigations from 10 to 12. At 12 o'clock there is a multidisciplinary meeting including radiologists, oncologists, uh, radiotherapists, surgeons and, and gastroenterologists. And then we will, we will do the section for the treatment of these patients. And at, at the end of that day, they will, which direction we will go, medical oncology, chemotherapy, surgery or stenting. That's all within one day then. Mm. Doctors facing, uh, doctors and surgeons facing patients with pancreatic cancer, they may get a bit disheartened at times because it's a difficult disease. Have you got any words of, of encouragement for them? Well, at least well, from a surgical point of view, um, the, the progress we made is that, that in the early days when I started surgery, uh, the majority of these patients were suffering from extensive morbidity and even mortality up to 20% after these procedures. And nowadays we are able to relieve symptoms with a relative low morbidity and mortality. So that, that, are, that is the progress we made during the last uh, 20 years, I guess. Well, Dirk Haumer, it's a great pleasure to talk with you, and I wish you every success in the future. Um, so thank you for being on eCancer TV here in Bordeaux. Thank you, I enjoyed it.